Welcome to Osage County, Oklahoma, a land of rolling plains and hidden secrets. Here, a little-known tragedy unfolded nearly a century ago, one that shook the foundations of American justice. This is the story of the Osage murders, a tale of immense wealth, betrayal, and the fight for survival. What started as a period of newfound prosperity for the Osage people soon turned into a nightmare, where no one could be trusted and fear spread like wildfire. Even as the oil derricks continued to pump wealth from the earth, the shadow of death loomed over the Osage, casting a pall over their once bright future. The Osage nation was relocated to Oklahoma in the late 1800s, where they negotiated rights to the oil-rich land. This relocation, originally intended to secure the tribe's future, ironically set the stage for the coming tragedy. By the 1920s, the Osage people were among the richest per capita in the world. Oil discovered beneath their land brought a wave of prosperity. The world watched in envy as the Osage lived in luxury, building mansions, driving new cars, and enjoying the best that money could buy. Their wealth brought a stark contrast between their affluent lifestyles and the poverty-stricken white settlers around them. Yet this wealth attracted not only admiration, but also dark intentions. As the Osage sought to celebrate their newfound success, others plotted to take it away, seeing opportunities in the headrights that made the Osage so powerful. In a country where racial tensions ran high, this juxtaposition of wealth made the Osage a target. In 1923 alone, the Osage nation earned over $30 million from oil leases, a staggering sum that drew the attention of both local residents and national interests. But with great wealth came great danger. In the dark of night, members of the Osage began to die under suspicious circumstances, gunshots, poisonings and mysterious explosions. Fear swept through the Osage community as family after family mourned the loss of loved ones. While some deaths were written off as accidents or illnesses, the frequency and timing began to suggest something more sinister. The Osage, who had once lived with pride, now lived in fear, unsure of who would be next. The lack of answers and slow response from local law enforcement fueled a growing sense of injustice among the Osage. The series of killings that occurred between 1921 and 1926 came to be known as the Osage Reign of Terror. William Hale was a respected figure in the local community, known as the King of the Osage Hills. A wealthy cattle rancher, he presented himself as a friend to the Osage, but his ambitions were far more sinister. He orchestrated a campaign of terror against the Osage, aiming to seize their wealth, one murder at a time. Behind closed doors, Hale's charm gave way to calculated ruthlessness, as he enlisted family members, including his nephew, Ernest Burkhart, to carry out his dark plans. Hale's influence reached into the pockets of local law enforcement, ensuring that investigations into the Osage deaths stalled or disappeared altogether. William Hale was ultimately convicted as the mastermind behind multiple murders targeting the Osage, revealing a conspiracy that involved local officials. The Osage Tribal Council, desperate for justice, reached out to the federal government for help. The newly formed Bureau of Investigation, the precursor to the FBI, took on the case. It was one of their first major homicide investigations, and it would prove to be a defining moment for the young agency. Under the leadership of J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI saw this case as a chance to prove its capabilities. However, Hoover's directive was clear, solve the case quickly but also discreetly. The investigation's success would define the Bureau's future reputation and ability to take on major cases. Correlating fact. The Osage murders case marked the FBI's transition into investigating large-scale criminal enterprises, setting a precedent for future operations against organized crime. To crack the case, the FBI sent undercover agents into the community. Disguised as ordinary men, they sought out secrets, built trust, and uncovered clues. It wasn't long before they began to unravel a web of deceit that led straight to William Hale. But infiltrating a tight-knit community wasn't easy. 
Many locals were either too afraid or too loyal to speak up. The agents faced constant danger and suspicion as they dug deeper into the deaths. Yet, through patient and persistent work, they collected evidence, tracked suspicious transactions, and uncovered witness testimonies that painted a chilling picture of Hale's influence. Correlating fact. The use of undercover tactics was groundbreaking for the FBI at the time, helping them gather crucial evidence that would be key in prosecuting the conspirators. Her sisters, mother, and extended family were killed one by one. As she grieved, she struggled to understand why her family was being targeted. Unbeknownst to her, the greatest betrayal came from within her own home. Her husband, Ernest Burkhart, once a man she thought she could trust, had become a pawn in his uncle William Hale's deadly game. The discovery of Ernest's involvement shattered Molly, revealing the depths of the conspiracy against the Osage. Her heartbreak turned to resolve as she began to work with investigators to seek justice for her murdered family. Correlating fact, Molly's husband, Ernest Burkhart, was later implicated as part of the plot orchestrated by his uncle, William Hale. After years of cover-ups and bloodshed, Hale was sentenced to life imprisonment and Ernest's confession revealed the depth of his guilt. But while the convictions brought a sense of closure, they could not restore what the Osage had lost. The trial served as a turning point, highlighting the systemic failures that allowed the murders to continue unchecked for so long. For the Osage people, the struggle for justice was a painful reminder of their fight to preserve their culture and heritage in the face of exploitation. Correlating fact, the Osage murders trials were among the first cases to spotlight corruption and racial prejudice in federal investigations, challenging the public to rethink the justice system's fairness. Decades after the reign of terror, the Osage people continue to honor their ancestors and preserve the stories of those who suffered. The Osage Cultural Center stands as a tribute to their resilience and a place for future generations to learn about this dark chapter in their history. Today, the Osage Nation is actively working to reclaim their narrative, ensuring that the story of the murders and the injustices they faced is not forgotten. Through education, art and storytelling, the Osage share their journey turning their painful past into a source of strength and cultural pride. The new generations of Osage are not only reclaiming their heritage, but also their economic rights, showing that while their ancestors were wronged, their story continues with dignity and hope. Correlating fact. The Osage nation today remains a sovereign tribal nation with a focus on economic development and cultural preservation ensuring that the lessons of the reign of terror are never forgotten. It speaks to the darker parts of America's history, where greed and prejudice could extinguish lives with impunity. But it also shows the power of justice, however delayed, and the strength of a community that refused to be erased. As we remember this history, we reflect on the importance of acknowledging past injustices to build a more just future. The legacy of the Osage people is not defined by the reign of terror alone, but by their enduring spirit, their fight for their rights and their efforts to ensure that such tragedies are never repeated. This is not just a story of tragedy, it is a story of survival and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Correlating fact, the Osage Reign of Terror has been the subject of renewed interest in recent years, with books like Killers of the Flower Moon by David Gran bringing the story to a wider audience, helping to shed light on a chapter of history that had long been forgotten.